Hi, this is Dr. Ramin Tayani from the Tayani Institute, ophthalmologist and oculoplastic specialist. Uh, today I'm going to talk about orbital tumors and their before and after care. So orbital tumors is a wide diagnosis, wide discussion, but for purposes of this video, I'm going to try to keep it very narrow. There are multiple different types of orbital tumors. Basically, it's a mass um, a growth that happens inside the orbit. The orbit is a bony structure that surrounds the eyeball. And um, you can have benign tumors, you can have malignant tumors, you can have metastatic tumors, you can have normal fat that appears like mass, but it's just normal fat. The eyeball sits in a sea of fat that surrounds the eyeball as a protective mattress between the eyeball and the bony structure. So, in general, the approaches for an orbital mass can be from the upper lid incision, it can go from a lower lid inside of the eyelid incision um, or can be more complicated and have to go from a sinus approach. There's multiple different ways. So again, for purposes of this video, I'm going to keep it very brief in terms of there are very diff multiple different ways of entering the orbit to get to the tumor and not all orbital tumors need to be removed. If it's a malignant tumor, of course, it has to be removed. Sometimes it's a matter of just a biopsy, something like a lymphoma, which um, is very, very uh, um, amenable to radiation. We get a biopsy that it is a lymphoma, and if it's localized to the orbit, radiation treatment to the orbit is all you need. It's not really a surgical treatment. So regardless, um, the approach could be different. It's uh, usually a very straightforward approach. Uh, get to the access to the, to the mass, remove either it in full, or get a biopsy or a sample of it, send it to pathology, and then treat the, the, the uh, matter depending on the diagnosis. The before and after care of an orbital surgery is uh, pretty straightforward as well. <clears throat> Typically, there's no preoperative care that's necessary, uh, except for if you are on a blood thinner, we ask that you stop uh, aspirin two weeks prior, and any other blood thinners, usually three to five days prior to surgery. On the night before surgery, we ask that you don't eat or drink anything after midnight. So if surgery is on a Thursday, I want you to stop drinking or eating anything after midnight on Wednesday. You show up to surgery about an hour before surgery. You're, meet, you're met with the uh, anesthesiologist and nursing staff. They'll do some paperwork, get an IV going, and get you comfortable. Most orbital surgery is done under general anesthesia. Once you're taken back to the operating room, the anesthesiologist puts you to sleep. You're comfortable. There's no pain um, or discomfort during surgery. And most orbital surgery postoperatively is fairly pain-free as well. But just to cover... Um, things will give you a narcotic that you can use for a couple of days after surgery. The care at home, you may be patched. If you are patched, I want you to keep the patch on. During the night, you'll either have it on for one day or possibly a week. Every patient's a little bit different. The nurse will tell you uh, to keep the patch on for how long after surgery. If there's no patch placed, you usually like to have the ointment placed on the incision line. If it's on the eyelid, you put it on the outside. If it's on the inside of the lid, you put the, the, the ointment on the eyeball. And drops are used in a tapering fashion, starting with four times a day, and every day, every week, you do one less drop. So you go from four to three to two to one over the course of four weeks to stop the drops. Throughout the whole time, you can use artificial tears if needed for lubrication. And we recommend icing the area for 48 hours, 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off while you're awake. We want to have you not have any exertion. Anything physical activity should be minimized to just normal daily stuff, nothing exertional, no sports for about seven to 10 days. Also keep the area dry in terms of showering and washing it for the first 48 hours, after which you can shower normally. That pretty much covers it for the before and after care and the overview of orbital tumors. This is Dr. Ramin Tayani from the Tayani Institute. Till next time, have a great day. <laughs>